Let's get to it. A fiend kills 17 in Florida. I won't mention his name. You're not going to see his picture. F him. Instead, let's focus on helpful action. Here are some things I'd suggest to do to reduce these events. Number one, we need to harden soft targets with security and training. This should be a trillion dollar industry, one that helps protect against not just mass shooters, but terrorists as well. An industry that's already used by tech giants, entertainment and media entities should be bigger than all of them combined. It makes sense. Number two, we need a new motto. Fact, this punk had a zillion red flags. The FBI were tipped off and they blew it. So no more see something, say something. Instead, give me see something, say something, now do something. The problem is no side in this debate trusts each other. If you say you want common sense gun laws, the other side knows that's code for something else. If you say you want your gun rights protected, the other side calls you a killer. So here's a suggestion. Think offensively. The mistake we make is to think defensively. You know, how do we rig the system to stop perps from getting guns? That's wrong. You need to think offensively. How do we tag the perps and keep them from getting guns? We want law-abiding folks to have access, not the bad eggs. Do you see the difference? We need a database where a creep like this fits in perfectly based on testimony from cops, students, school officials, who then get a judge to issue a civil court order. If you're in this base, no gun. And liberals, no more whining about mass incarceration. You violate the database, you get a felony hit, mandatory time. Number three, bring back psychiatric hospitals. They still exist, but state-run facilities house less than a tenth of the patients that they did back in the 50s. That's a 95% decline. How is that possible? You're telling me that we have fewer insane people now than we did in the 50s? <laughs> have you watched TV? That's nuts. Mind you, this last fiend might not be nuts, but a score-settling nihilist. And that speaks to a greater issue, one that the media indulges. And it's my last point, infamy. If you look at these mass killers, you'll find an interest in those who came before them. And our relentless coverage caters to that. And so we keep showing the face of the fiend over and over and over as we dig deeper into his life, which the media repeats because, you know, you got to fill space. But this coverage only creates more monsters. We advertise infamy, creating incentive for the next attack. Look, we are all vulnerable to persuasion. If not, why do we have advertising? We know fiends study press clippings of past fiends. We know that when a suicide, a teenage suicide is covered, it always triggers more. News coverage magnifies the impact, and that becomes catnip to others. So. Imagine the power that this fiend has over us to command every network to abide by his actions, to foment chaos and make us question our very own safety, to make all of us know his past, his deep thoughts. What kind of power does this fiend have over us? It's a power that we give him at a terrible cost. Period. Welcome tonight's guests. When the going gets tough, the tough get shit. Terry Shepard, retired Special Forces Master Sergeant. Terry He's 50% bold, 50% beautiful actor and author, Sean Kanan. She's zany, brainy, and loves it when it's rainy. National Review reporter, Kat Timp. And big rigs are his roller skates. Former bodyguard, massive sidekick, Tyrus. This has been an ugly week, Terry, yeah, no man. question about really it. Bad, really and bad. we seem to get here and we go through these stories a Quite lot. Frequently. Yeah, it's uh. it and I just I'm curious about you. You are around guns all the time. You've been in combat. I'm interested in what your perspective is. Yeah, well, this and this hurts everybody. I mean, one thing that's really uh, uh, bothers me is there's, there's a, as soon as this happens, everyone's like, you want to see kids dead or you don't care about this. Everyone, this is the worst thing that can happen. And as, yeah, I'm 25 years almost in special forces. I fight over there, so we don't have to have this happen. So it's really, yeah. it galls me. I've always said this, and, and you've got some great stuff, Tyrus, we talked about later. I'm, uh, I'm going to let him hit this, but... I'm willing, I've always been willing to have a conversation with, with people who are uh, suspicious of gun. I'm a Second Amendment guy, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to sit down and talk to someone about this, but 
They've got to be at least honest. They've got to be at least factually uh, correct. And they've got to have it in good faith. And I think that's, you're right. You have these two sides now that anytime I hear exactly what you said, uh, sensible gun, con I said, well, who's, who's the one making that sensible decision? Mm -hmm. America is guns, man. It's a gun country. We're, something's wrong about not the guns. It's something wrong about all the other things. And yeah. that's, that's all I can say. There's, about a, there's that. a combination of factors, but when a Republican hears uh, sensible gun laws, they think that they're opening the door to something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. And then if you say First Amendment, then they immediately they think, oh, you, you're just yes. you know, a, a every crazy. time, every yeah. time. Sean, uh, you're a dad, uh, so this probably when you see this kind of stuff, it it's got to be it's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, it's. You know, here we are one month after the shooting in Kentucky, mm -hmm. and it, it, this is a tragedy that touches all of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Terry said, I'm a, I'm a Second amend, Amendment proponent as well, but, you know, here's the thing. Very few things in life are black and white. They're nano shades of gray. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, one of my nano shades of gray is I just don't feel an 18-year-old kid outside of training in the military needs to have an assault rifle yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we have to start having an honest mm -hmm. conversation about this. I mean, you hit so many great points in your monologue about things that need to be done that shouldn't be politicized by either side. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just good common sense. Yeah. It's interesting because the, 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 the difference in... Than younger Absolutely. men, and it's biological, it's hormonal, and maybe that's that's one solution. Sure. Kat, you know, I we talk about the bifurcation of, of politics. The two loudest voices are often the ones we hear most. Are, are is there any way that somebody ever gives an inch on this? No, <laughs> I really don't think so. And if you talk about banning certain kinds kinds of weapons. Mm -hmm. Rifles of any kind were responsible for only 3% of homicides in 2016. It's That's very true. rare for something like this to happen. Of course, that doesn't make anyone feel better when a tragedy like this happens. But I'm going to do something really crazy, mm. which I have not heard anybody do yet, and I'm going to blame this shooting on the shooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going right to say on. that it was yeah. his fault. Yeah. Yeah. But he showed remorse, Kat. Remember, he showed, remember after the lawyer, his lawyer says he showed yeah, him. him. Yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've said that word three times now. Our uh, our censors are going to be upset. All right, Tyrus, we were talking in the green room that you had you had your own solutions. Well, this is coming from a place of being executive security, and for a short stint, I was a teacher. It wasn't bad, just, just a pig rate. Um, <laughs> so it wasn't really funny. And when I was listening to this, because, of course, first of all, if we outlawed guns tomorrow, mm -hmm. no more guns in this country, all you would do would be opening the business market for the black market. Just like we said, no drugs, and drugs still yeah. get pushed in this country, and then we have no idea what was out there. So that's, not a, that, that's just not who we are. We, yeah. we have freedom of speech, and we're going to have guns. That's what we're, our country's built on. But when 9-11 happened, the planes hit the towers, airports were changed forever. Mm -hmm. We got the TSA. Our children are getting hit. It's time to change the schools forever. Mm -hmm. And... There is a population out there, and I checked, I only had, they didn't have the new stats out, but last year's stats was 4.3% unemployment for returning veterans in this country. That's 435,000 trained men who have eyes and ears. We need to have them at the schools. Mm -hmm. TSA needs to be at the school. One way in, one way out. We have dogs. There's not one person in this building who will say, up my taxes, $25, whatever it needs to be, trillion dollars. It's, it's, a, it's a business. I would even take money away from other things. Yeah. Because the only way we need to get with it, because now it's guys with guns. Ten years from now, it's going to be guys with a drone. It's mm -hmm. going to be guys with a remote control. Robot. And who's better? When I'm at the airport and I see a guy with an M16 and a, and, a, and a German Shepherd dog walking by smelling stuff, I'm not worried about nothing. And I would like my children I'm to worried. be the same way. The dog bothers me. <laughs> and you know what? Especially you should, from, but you know I'm what? The reason Jamaica. why that dog bothers you because you immediately go, I don't got nothing on me, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. I'm cool. Yeah. I would prefer, I will take that. And it needs to happen in our school. We TSA, we protect our airports. Let's, although a different name, TSA, but let's protect our children. That's a good idea. It's, dumb, it's doable. Yeah, it's it can be done. Let's do it. It is. I mean, obviously, there is the argument that where, what kind of society have we become right. that we are actually ha having we to protect? That? that we have to do that. Well, we're an honest a, society. Now. We're an honest society. Let's be big boys. Let's we have, keep it real. Yeah. We have 
320 million people. That's a huge haystack. We've got so many variables, technology, and this disaffected youth and, and all sorts of it, it, people are changing. And you bring up the idea of drones. In terms of people who want to create mayhem, terrorists, or mass shooters, the idea of marrying a drone with any kind of bio, bio agent. That's oh, terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifying. And it it may happen probably in our lifetimes, I would think. You know, there's another aspect to this. I mean, obviously, this is going to take a multi-prong approach to deal with this. And one thing that I think we need to talk about is the nexus between social network platforms mm -hmm. and law enforcement. Because for me, it's really egregious that yeah. there's language this kid was using on Facebook. And they've yeah. got all these algorithms to get us to buy this. They know when yes. we come from Olive Garden. So and they say, you know, how was your experience there? So good and they can see something like, hey, I want to be a professional school shooter yeah and those jackasses yeah. can't report that to law enforcement this is such a good I, we gotta go but yeah, good one. this is so funny if I look if I decide for 10 minutes to look for mattresses mm -hmm. for the next month <laughs> all I have all over my 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 okay computer hey, it's sure, mattresses. Sure, Greg, mattresses. Sure, Greg, it's mattresses it's not mattresses right. 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 but you Greg was my, looking at mattresses but Sean's right they gotcha. know everything about totally. us they know everything about Hot us young it's, mattresses it's an he's <laughs> All right. But it's true. No, yeah. There is an algorithm for everything, and they they could solve that. That's such a good point. All right. Don't go anywhere. Russia collusion delusion suffers a serious setback. That's next. <laughs> Were we rushing to conclusions? That Americans were colluding? We don't deserve laughter. <laughs> Robert Mueller's special counsel's office charged 13 Russian nationals with interfering in the 2016 election. I hope one of them wasn't Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein laid out the charges on Friday. According to the indictment, these Russians posed as socially and politically active Americans. They advocated for and against particular candidates. They set up online group pages. They bought ad space on social media platforms. Hilariously, I love this, they created groups to support President Trump's election, and then they created groups to protest his election. They are the Earth's trolls. <laughs> They're like a jerky friend trying to break up a loving couple, and that couple is America. Damn Russians, they attempted to sow discord and undermine faith in our democracy, the jerks. <laughs> But what about Americans, Rod? What did we do? And did these Russians affect the outcome of the election? Now, there is no allegation in this indictment that any American was a knowing participant. There is no allegation in the indictment that the charged conduct altered the outcome of the 2016 election. My God, I think he just put MSNBC out of business. <laughs> But you knew that all along, didn't you, little lamb? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> A lamb that said, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. So, Kat, uh, the Dems' response is, yeah, but not yet. It's not over yet. I've heard that like six times uh, yesterday on Friday. Well, it's, it's not, I guess, technically over yet. What are you trying to say, Kat? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> look. This proves that there was Russian meddling mm -hmm. in the election, and I think that we need to do all we can to stop it for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, to protect the integrity of our nation's election process. True. And two, to protect me from ever having to talk about this ever <laughs> again. It really is. It's endless. It's, yeah. and by the way, we knew that Russia, yeah. how old are we? Yeah, Pirates. I saw this story and I was yep. like, why is this on all day? Yeah, I, I knew this. Yeah. When I grew up watching um, what, uh, Boris Badenov and oh, Natasha. Yeah. Rocky yeah. and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle. We knew <laughs> Russians were, they were always meddling in that cartoon, Tyrus. Right. Always meddling. Look, I, <laughs> they were, the worst though. part of this, somebody got catfished. Yeah. <laughs> they're not, they weren't trading Russians.
secrets. Yes, that's yeah. true. There's some there's some first year temps and interns on both campaigns going, oh God, please. Yes. I thought, I thought, we I were thought loved. she loved me. I thought he loved me. Like <laughs> all this this is very bad for, for Facebook and this is bad for the 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 social media sites because they were this is where they did their thing. This is not it doesn't do with Donald Trump. Oh, I, man, I'm sorry my phone's ringing. I'm really embarrassed about that. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry guys, this is important. Maybe it's my mom. Hold on. Hello? Yeah, they're here. Uh, okay, I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Uh, wow, it's yeah. awkward. Uh, Judas Priest wants his pants back. <laughs> Just so you know, that is my favorite band. You didn't even know that. Why am I not No, surprised? actually, I did know that. I've yeah. got no issues with the pants. I think uh, we should I have express issues. ourselves how we want I to. I know Rob Halford wouldn't have any issues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about something really you want to keep slaying? Uh, yeah, okay, that was, Terry. By that the way, was nice. like, I didn't see that coming. So he goes, oh, wait, I got a phone ring. And I'm it like, could have been my mom. It's been years. <laughs> Dude, no. I, I saw the looks you were giving me in the green room. I knew it was coming. What do you want to know? Can I, I want to play this sound on tape. Who is the real winner in all this? A guy whose name rhymes with Mitt. <laughs> a few months ago, when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not Al-Qaeda. You said Russia. In the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back because, you know, the Cold War has been over for 20 years. Isn't it amazing oh, how now they're wow. Cold Warriors? <laughs> it's, also, it's also funny that uh, when President Obama was talking about Russia and you know, our, our Middle Eastern enemies, he sucked at both of them. Mm. You know, all this stuff happened. When, no, I, I, all this, no, I mean, it's, uh, so, much of this, so much of this happened while President Obama was running the ship. And, we know that. and I think it's interesting, though, that the timing of this Mr. Rosenstein. Is it Rosenstein, Rosenstein? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> he doesn't they, know. He doesn't know. It doesn't matter. He releases it now. This Good is looking what, guy, though. He actually basically, it's almost like they had to back off of this yes. investigation, which we all knew. Tired of talking about yeah. it. But because also the FBI, uh, the FBI has so much egg on their face. I mean, mm -hmm. they've gotten so many, they're hammered. So they, uh, they have to walk away from this because I think if they stay in it, we're going to find out even more missing texts and, and yeah. emails and secret communiques and stuff like that. How, by the way, how are we going to get these guys? Aren't they in Russia? <laughs> the other thing, is, yeah, yeah. By the way, at first, wait a minute. What was it? Thirteen dudes? Is that really? Is yeah. that a threat to our democracy? It's like a club. Oh. It's a club. Like a little high school club. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's not 13. the thirteen dudes. It's the twenty-five interns' hearts they broke. That's the real. <laughs> okay. That's the fair, real. It's fair so way. easy. It's happened to me many times. Yeah, we've all been catfished. Yes. Everyone knows it. Sean, um, what are your thoughts on this? Are you surprised that it's? I mean, the, the Dems are going to make this into like this is collusion, even though it's meddling. Meddling is one way. Collusion is two ways. I don't think anybody is negating the fact that the Russians meddled in our elections, but there is an astronomical difference between meddling in our elections and collusion by the Trump administration. And mm -hmm. this has been conflated since the get-go. And hopefully, uh, Deputy AG Rosenstein's uh, statement is going to put a nail in the, the coffin of this, this mm -hmm. uh, straw man argument that they've been using. I don't know. You know, I don't know. The one thing I find interesting is that the reason why people see this as a huge threat is because of it's it's hacking. Yeah. And so people when people hear hacking, they think, oh, my God. But this is no different than spying in the 70s. This is that TV show, The Americans, mm -hmm. on Twitter. Right. Yeah, That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they, instead of wearing disguises and hanging out in Washington parks, you know, where, where they got a mustache. Right. A woman, the woman has a mustache. Hold the newspaper. They're, old, they're, hold, they're holding up the newspaper. Yeah. Now it's on Twitter. Yeah, right They're on. just playing right. the same roles. And I honestly True. think it's for Russians, it's nothing personal. <laughs> this is just, this is their golf. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, actually, that's really great. That's, this is what they do. This is what they do. This is what they this do. This is, what they do. This I, is you the know. espionage and Espionage and is like nothing. And... This is, I mean, the country's run by an ex-KGB guy. Also, please, have, nobody have any un, un, under, be under any illusion that the U.S. doesn't do this in other places. We do the exact yes. same thing. All the yeah. time. All governments do this. Yeah, All yeah, the time. Yeah. And by the way, don't, and, and, it's, and it's mistaken to think that it's actually an offensive act. It's sometimes defensive. Like, you send people over, sure, spies be. over, just to see what somebody's up to. You hack to see what something's up to. Right. It's not, it's a mistake to accuse a country of attacking, a, attacking yeah. uh, when it's actually, I mean, some of them do attack, but, I mean, they're not all, I just, it's, it's so weird that the people that were not cold warriors then are now, when Russia is one-eighth the size of the USSR, now they're worried. They're just it drives funny. me crazy. I grew up in the 70s and the 80s when they were telling me I was full of crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, I think the other thing is they have so much. There's a lot of people have so much in, uh, invested in this. Yes. The Dems and the media. It they is. Put, this has been going.
Three Dead One Ace Real. We were all watching it. Like, yeah, man, and they just canceled it. Done. Yeah, they canceled now it. what? Yeah, well, now what? Yeah, exactly. This is like the greatest, you know. But it's our watching. arrogance. Yeah. The fact that they can't look. Russia didn't need President Trump's help. Didn't need Hillary's. They just. Dude. Let's throw some stuff and see what they do. Look, yeah. they so now we got to do it to them. That's yeah. what. That's how spies work. All right, up next, the congressman that just trolled Nancy Pelosi, and he may save us some money to boot. I think I love this guy platonically. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Robert Gray. At least 13 people are dead, including three children, after a helicopter crash in Mexico. Those on board were part of a team surveying damage from a 7.2 earthquake. The chopper crashed on top of two vans while trying to land, but no one aboard the helicopter was killed or seriously injured. No fatalities were reported from that quake that struck Friday. More than a dozen people were also injured in the crash. Mexico is still reeling from deadly earthquakes that struck in September. Back here at home, West Virginia is bracing for the worst. That's after the governor declared a state of emergency because heavy rain triggering massive flooding. The National Guard is on standby and the Emergency Operations Center is on enhanced watch status. The rain and some snow is expected to continue into next week. I'm Robert Gray. Now back to the Greg Gutt. You know, it's rare to find a politician with a sense of humor. You'd have better luck finding an army sergeant in leather pants. <laughs> so, so I tip my imaginary hat to Republican Rep Todd Rokita from Indiana, who's unveiled a bill that would make those bonuses given out due to the tax cuts tax-free, so workers will get to keep more of the money they received on bonuses up to 2500 bucks. Now, before you call that extra cash crumbs, realize he's called the bill creating relief and useful middle-class benefits and savings. <laughs> or yeah. crumbs, yeah. for sure. So, I wonder what he's trying to say to Nancy Pelosi. So, by all means, my bitter but rich liberal friends, call these crumbs from crumbs, crumbs, but you end up looking like a crumb yourself. The belief that such bonuses are a joke because you deem them not large enough. Well, if you think they're so small, why don't you give them out yourself, you jackasses? <laughs> Bottom line, Dems only like wealth spreading when they're doing it with your money. They know tax is too large, they'll take the last dime. So far, nearly 350 companies have offered bonuses and so on to workers. We're talking billions, and they're not taken from other people's pockets. No wonder the Democrats hate it. Right. Period. Period. Cyrus, that was pretty clever, huh? Pretty clever you, you, crumbs. You just Good for a Republican, huh? Yeah. I have a low bar. <laughs> hey, listen, that's a high bar, and I'm just... There's nothing worse than anyone who's ever been in an argument with somebody to say something and then have them flip it back on you. You know, <laughs> yes. like, like if your wife asks you if she's gain, if she's gaining any weight, and you go, yeah, a little bit. And then two weeks later, she'll, you'll be like, hey, you think you got time for tonight? Ah, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the Democrats just don't get it. There was deplorables. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crumbs. Yeah. Until you learn how to insult to where they can't use it back. Maybe they need to take a page out of the president Trump's handbook on insults because usually when he hits you with something, you can't you can't recycle it. Yeah. They literally, <laughs> it's gonna. Yeah. It's the Democrats need to change the name to the alley oop party because all they do is throw it up and <laughs> the Republicans like wow. I mean it's just. Cat, this tax bill has as. It has immediately improved people's lives. Right. Right. So how can people say this is bad? I don't know. Because they always find a way, don't they? That is true. But people don't really care about that if they have more money in their pockets. Mm -hmm. And I love the title of this bill. I think it's amazing to see someone be that petty. Mm -hmm. that, was the w that comment was the worst. I thought the longer you do stuff, what I hear, you're supposed to get better at it right. as time goes on. And Nancy Pelosi just seems to be getting <laughs> yeah, yeah. worse to worse. To, I don't even know where she is right now. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Nancy Pelosi the one who was, uh, she was touting that everyone got a $40 
Uh, that's right. Tax a few months ago. Or something like that. I mean, it just goes to show how utterly out of touch she is. A thousand know, dollars, even or, in New York, is a hundred beers. But you want to know something? <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, though, here's the thing that's really disturbing. That we're at the point now where the left would really rather not see the middle class benefit uh, at the hands of the GOP doing something positive. That's true. You know, they would rather just chastise it. And That's true. You know, this is something that's a boon to the middle class, and it's only going to get better. Because it came from the other side. Exactly. So that's, even that's if you exactly author, right. offer a path to citizenship, which is what the Democrats have been screaming about, but it's coming from Trump, they reject they, it. They, they, they reject it. 1.7 million people are, are, are able to stay here, and, and, like, and they're going, oh, my God, it's terrible. It goes, Wait a minute, if Hillary did that, you guys would be rolling in your own filth, <laughs> yeah. Terry. Speaking of filth, speaking you Speaking of rolling in filth. <laughs> yes. And, By the way, you have little strings on the side of your leather pants. I didn't <laughs> notice that. It's like, it's like, if you can, it's like, you, I don't think you're supposed to wear anything underneath these leather pants. <laughs> what do you mean underneath them? Uh, all right. You, Back. you thought he got something underneath that? It was a team of scientists and fashion models that got him on. I'm looking. Those are not pants. Those are skinny pants. It's a crew served weapon. Let's move on. Yes. You know, I thought that we should have more acronyms. I came with. I thought, by the way, I was okay. going to say, I'm an Army guy, so lots of acronyms. You got one. What do you I have, have uh, wait, uh, want aliens to love life. Dang, it sucked. When, when, <laughs> when everybody came out and said this is crumbs, it just it, they just keep showing their hand. Mm -hmm. It's like just if, if they were smart, they would have just shut up and said, oh, man, they got us again. They gave people money, but they can't. And they just look bad. I yeah. don't know. They're just not good at this. You're right. I, Nancy Pelosi's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Worse. It's, it's the afternoon brandies. I'm pretty sure. Worse. <laughs> the afternoon brandies. It's scotch with no water. Some and might the, say deteriorating. Yeah. But it's, it also shows kind of the, the difference in mindset of, of Dems and Republicans when the Dems frame it and the media frames it as uh, reducing taxes. You're stealing. Yeah. How, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? That's actually not stealing. That's. Mm -hmm. Reducing taxes is good, but they do really they really do believe that that's what it is. Fair point, Captain yes. Leather. <laughs> yeah. Never seen a cow look so good. They're just pants, dude. I mean, <laughs> no, no, they're no, not. No. They're, they're not just pants, pants Terry. They they're make just pants, Greg. You guys are all forgetting that Terry can kill you with the story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping my mouth shut. I want you to know, Listen, too. Karate yeah. Kid 3 or not, you can only be so tough next to a green beret. So, <laughs> and I did have you a special... You go with pants, man. Thank Listen, you. Actually, he's allowed to find himself. Do your thing, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm embracing. I do not. <laughs> Greg, stop this show now. All right. They are pants that make one pant. Yes. Up next. <laughs> Don't clap for that. I already feel terrible. Winter Olympics. The only thing Russia isn't meddling in these days. Am I right? Yeah. I love the Olympics. It's so Olympian. Except when the media fell in love with Lil' Kim's Lil' Sis and wrote those glowing headlines. Kim Jong-un's sister turns on the charm, taking Pence's spotlight. Blab the New York Times. The diplomatic dance, where an, if it were an event at the Winter Olympics, Kim Jong-un's younger sister would be favored to win the gold, says CNN stupidly. I'm going to puke, said Greg Gutfeld. <laughs> I did say that. Did you I say that? I said that. North Korea is a murderous regime. The media knew their propaganda was coming, and they fell for it anyway. Other than that, I'm loving the Olympics. But get this. As a guy who works for Fox, I'm not allowed to use any of the footage because NBC owns the rights to the games. So much like when athletes go on strike, I have to find replacement footage for all the events I want to talk about. Like curling. I mean, it's just mesmerizing <laughs> to watch. You got the stone, you got the broom. I, I don't really get the scoring, but when it's on, I can't look away. And then, of course, bobsledding. You know, they go down that icy track so fast. Takes nerves of steel to compete in that sport. As a viewer, I think it's the element of danger that makes it so exciting to watch, for me anyway. And the couple's ice dancing. <laughs> The precision, the synchronization, the technique. And when I watch, I always wonder, are they a couple couple? 
or is it strictly business? Because they have such chemistry. How come they don't get dizzy and fall down from all those triple axles? And then there's swimmer Ryan Lochte making his Winter Olympics debut. Sis kill. <laughs> Nailed it. That's gold for me. All right, Sean. Thoughts on the Olympics? And well, it's you know it's nice to see the politics and the playing field are alive and well in South Korea. I mean, you know the thing that's so hypocritical. Wait, 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 wait. You know what, Karate Kid Three villain? What? You're a Karate Kid Three villain. You should like this because every sporting event needs a villain. I, th this is true. We, find, we, know, we have a great one now in the Olympics. But the thing is, the, she's the media darling. Yes, that's which true. Is, this is such hypocrisy mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, they're lauding her as stealing the Olympics. And meanwhile, President Trump is getting lambasted for his bromance with Putin, supposedly. Yeah, it's, it's and so it just seems like it's, yeah. you know, Again, you pierce through the, mi the miasma of my questioning. To find a solution. All right, LPG. What do you think? LPG. What does LPG stand for, Greg? Leather pants guy. Oh. <laughs> I knew that I wanted him to say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. North Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. Prison camp run by a cartel. Fabulous. Yeah. And I just, you know, it, it was funny to watch the meet. By the way, and I just forgot his name. I feel terrible. Uh, there's an active duty uh, Green Bray on the bobsled team. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. he's from 10th Group. Yeah, I just, uh, hey, bud, good luck. I, I haven't been following him on the track. <laughs> Tyrus, feel free to weigh in on any part of the Olympics. Well, in his defense, the pants are cutting the circulation off, so the memory's going. Um, <laughs> once he gets old. those off, he'll remember your name, so don't sweat it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, am I missing something? Did she give this dazzling speech? No. Yeah. Yeah. Was like everyone was crying, like, wow, it's really deep. Or is she standing there looking like, save me? Yeah. Is that? Because <laughs> she just kind of sits there, right? That's, if yeah. I miss, I mean, no, that, that, I was, it. that was it. Isn't that was she also my... the head of propaganda? And agitation. Sometimes I'm... in this country, we fall in love with people who want to kill us. Yeah, that is so true. But she literally just, she literally sits. <laughs> yeah. And yet our media but, favored oh my her God, Pence. That... The media said that she stole the uh, uh, spotlight from Pence. She was probably trying to steal they, food. You know what they're doing? <laughs> they, they are, they're literally sealing her death threat. Her, yeah. He's going to be like, oh, they like her better than me? Mm, someone getting poisoned when they get Actually, that's that's true. True. That's, that might yeah. be true, dude. Yeah. That that but, true. you know, that back to the true. Olympics, and I think only the North and South Koreans are watching it because... There's no one in the stands. Yeah. And they're not leaving because there's food and a chance to get yeah, out. So they're yeah, going to literally right. stay for every event. You, it, it, do you think it's because it's like the, the events only have large, uh, only have small groups at the events, so the stadiums just look huge? I was wondering that myself. No, I mean, it literally looks like seven people in yeah. hungry Koreans running around. It's also, it's also really weird. cold. It's, I, think I belong really to a group, uh, Hard Knock South. We, every Winter Olympics, we get assigned curling teams right and it's a we, we bet and this year i got assigned japan so mm -hmm. yeah i'm really you, excited about i that. think cat i believe that all olympics should be held in america so we can watch it in our superior time zones mm -hmm. no sense. yeah i well i've been watching a